Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with butternut squash cheesecake. That's right, we're making cheesecake with winter squash, which might not sound like a great idea, but if you want a cheesecake that's lighter, more flavorful, and just as rich and decadent, then it is a great idea. Maybe even a genius idea. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is roast some butternut squash, which I usually cut in half lengthwise, but this time after trimming off the end, I'm just gonna cut nice thick slices across like this, which I think might be a little safer prep for your average home cook. And then besides cutting, the only other thing we'll do is take out the seeds. Although some folks like to roast this as is and remove the seeds later. So if you'd rather do that, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the chairman of the board of how to de-seed your gourd. But I find doing it before roasting a little easier. But either way, once that's cut, scooped, and placed on a parchment-lined baking sheet, we will roast that at 400 degrees for about an hour or so, or until our butternut squash is very soft and tender, and probably looks like this. And of course, we're going to test that with the tip of a knife, since we try not to guess in the kitchen. And once we're sure that's cooked long enough, we'll simply let that sit and cool, while we move on to prep our spring form pan, which we will generously oil first, and what we'll do is flip that over and then fold up a paper airplane, but with no wings, which I guess makes it a paper rocket. But anyway, if we place the tip in the center and then make a cut right at the edge, once we unfold that, we should have the perfect size circle to cover the bottom, which we will place and press in to coat it with some oil, and then we'll flip it over, and then we'll smooth and press that out until it's very, very well secured to the bottom. And that's it, once our pan's set, We'll go back to our squash, which should be cool enough to handle at this point, but you'll know for sure if it is, because you won't get burned. And you'll see as I flip this one over, how we got some beautiful caramelization. And yes, we're gonna scoop and use all of this, except of course for the skin. And once we have that transferred into a bowl, we'll go ahead and take a potato masher and mash this nice and smooth. And of course, if you wanna use a food processor, you might get something a little bit smoother, but I don't think it matters or at least not enough to have to clean the food processor. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give that a nice mashing and then set it aside, at which point we will move on to our cheesecake batter, which starts with some very soft room temperature cream cheese, to which we will add a touch of white sugar, plus a little bit of all-purpose flour, and then we can also add our salt at this point. And once everything's in, we'll grab a spatula and we will mix and mash and cream all this together until we have a beautiful smooth mixture which is super fast and easy if your cream cheese is actually soft. But as usual, I did not take mine out of the fridge early enough. And if that happens to you, just simply fast forward a few minutes to when it actually became nice and soft and easy to work with. But anyway, the point is use soft cream cheese and then mix it together until it's smooth like this. And then once it is, we will stop and we'll add a little bit of maple syrup plus exactly one and a half cups of our roasted mashed butternut squash. And if we were making a soup or something, I wouldn't say exactly a cup and a half because it wouldn't really matter. But for baked stuff like this, we kind of have to be a little more exact. And then we will also at this point toss in our spices, which will include a little bit of cinnamon, some ground ginger, and some freshly grated nutmeg. And we are using a very light touch with the spice. Right? Generally, people put in way too much of these spices when they're making these kind of things. And it just overpowers everything. So we want to be careful. And that's it, we can go ahead and take a whisk or one of these hand mixers and we'll blend this all together, starting off slowly at first. And then once it comes together, we can finish on a higher speed. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and toss in our real pure vanilla extract, plus five whole large eggs that we're gonna blend in one at a time, allegedly. Okay, I would definitely mix in the first couple one at a time. But as you can see here, I added the third and fourth ones all at once and nothing bad happened. But better safe than sorry. And if we did try to add all five at once and start blending, the mixture might separate. But anyway, we'll incorporate those eggs in as shown. And once that last one has been mixed in, we will finish up with our final ingredient, some heavy cream. And then as soon as that's been mixed in, we will grab a spatula and transfer this into our prepared pan. Oh, and by the way, since we're using the bass style cheesecake method, we don't have to make any crust, 
Since the cheesecake kind of makes its own as we cook this at a very high temperature, okay, usually cheesecakes are cooked very low and slow in a water bath and then left to cool slowly in the oven. All of that so we don't get a crack. But for the bath style method, we don't do any of that. All right, all we're going to do after that's in is give this the old tapa tapa. And then we're going to transfer it into the center of a 425 degree oven for about an hour. And what was supposed to happen is this was supposed to all puff up and get really dark and crack in like four or five different places, except none of that actually happened. And when I pulled mine out, it looked like this, which looked great, but it did not look anything like a bash cheesecake. Although it was pretty much set, except for a little bit of a wiggle in the center. But this did not do what I thought it was going to do, which is fine, except I knew as this cooled because of the hot, fast cooking method, it was definitely going to crack. So I mentally prepared myself. Oh, and when we use a spring form, when it comes out of the oven, while it's still hot, I like to go around with a thin knife to make sure it's not sticking to the sides, since this is going to contract in the pan as it cools. So I want to make sure everything's going to be able to pull away from the metal. And that's it. I simply let it cool down before removing the ring. And as predicted, as this cooled, some cracks formed. But you know what? I didn't care. Mostly because in the near future, I'm going to be eating some cheesecake. But anyway, cracks or not, we need to chill this completely before we try to cut and serve it. And I let mine chill overnight in the fridge, but just a few hours is fine. And then once nice and cold, I pulled it out and transferred it onto this stand. And at this point, you could just cut this into slices and serve it up. And believe me, nobody's going to care about the cracks. And if they do, stop making them cheesecake. But if you are going to present this whole, and you are self-conscious about the cracks, we can simply cover those up using something like these candied walnut halves, which I strategically placed over. I mean cracks. What cracks? And of course, besides nuts, you can also use fruit, or edible flowers, or some other kind of seasonally appropriate vegetation. And in the spirit of full disclosure, as I was placing these on, my wife Michelle walked by and said, I'm pretty sure those are poisonous which they might be, so after I took a couple pictures, I quickly pulled them off. Anyway, the point is, do not put poisonous stuff on top of your cheesecake. And that's it. After fussing around with crack coverage, I cut and served up a nice slice, which I decided to top with a little bit of whipped cream, as well as a few chopped up candied walnuts. And then as a final touch, believe it or not, to honor this cheesecake's savory main ingredient, I finished with a couple shakes of cayenne. Oh, yes, I did. And then once garnished, I grabbed a fork and dug in to what was a truly amazing bite of cheesecake. Okay, if you've ever had a pumpkin cheesecake, especially our version, which this recipe is based on, I really do think you're going to love this, since it is similar. Except while this was very rich and creamy, it was definitely lighter on the palate. And that butternut squash definitely adds a little bit of sweetness, but also a little bit of savoriness and sort of a subtle vegetal component that I found makes this much more interesting than your typical cheesecake. And as far as the texture goes, I don't think there's any difference at all between the classic low and slow method and this much higher heat bass style method. And yes, I'll add a link to the end of the video so you can see an actual bass cheesecake so you can better understand what I've been talking about. And even though that didn't work out exactly the same way here, the texture was still absolutely perfect so if you're not concerned with a few cracks, I encourage you to try this easier, much faster method. Especially since even if you used a traditional method and you go low and slow in a water bath and then let it cool in the oven, you will still sometimes get a crack. But no matter what method you decide to use, you're gonna end up with an amazing piece of cheesecake, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.